So going from international to club uh, soccer, we had some MLS action this weekend. Lots of big games, lots of big news. What do you guys? What do you guys want to talk about most from the weekend in MLS? Yeah, we'll get we'll get to our not the NYCFC game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was a it was one of their better games, better performances, but a one nil loss. It was a loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. another one nil loss. Uh, so not. Not great. I just said I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're not talking about it. Um, so, yeah, not this wasn't too much uh, in that game. It wasn't too exciting. Just, uh, for, yeah, obviously frustrating uh, for NYCFC fans. But the kit looks great. And yeah. we, look, we look great in it. Um, we absolutely do. Also, I am putting myself under a lot of pressure to say New York City FC instead of NYCFC. <laughs> it's challenging. We're figuring it out. Okay. Um, but uh, let, let's get to a couple other uh, notable and kind of wild games. Um, it, it, Inter Miami came to uh, Rebel Arena and they played. Did they? They did. <laughs> <laughs> they did. All the big stars were there except wow. for one. Wow. Uh, but it was very, very rainy and and cold. Uh, it felt like the the level of you know you ever watch a game and you only realize it's raining when they cut to that other angle. Yeah. Yes. Right. 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 Okay. This was not that. No. <laughs> you could tell it was raining. <laughs> It, regardless of what the camera was, yeah, this is the the Premier League is great at this. You're watching a game and you're like, oh, okay, the weather's pretty decent yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, get, yeah, then yeah. you go to the the the, the sideline guy on the camera yeah. and it's like, oh my god, this is a torrential <laughs> downpour. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I don't know what they is. fool me every time. <laughs> the camera's just uh, uh, just like, don't capture rain. No, for I'm some, like, some... man, the ball's moving fast today. <laughs> and then they cut to like a zoom in on the player. His hair's like in four <laughs> large clumps on his forehead. <laughs> I'm like, damn, he's sweat. Oh, <laughs> oh, I yeah, see what's happening. Because you watch Premier League, and you think like you know when people say, "Oh, it rains a lot in England," and you and you're like, "I watch every week. It doesn't rain that it much. It never and rains, <laughs> and barely ever." And then uh, yeah, you get you, uh, you you go to that other camera, and you're like, "Ah, okay, I get it." Camera I, from the sideline, or they hits the the. It hits either the light the right way, and you see it pouring through. You're Without like, damn, it rains all the time over there. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, Rebel Arena was in Stoke. Yeah, so this was... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you saw the the opening whistle, and there was a moment where uh, the referee is giving the ball to Luis Suarez, who's about to kick off, and you look at him, you see his face. He's like, bro, I didn't even want to come into work today. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. You, you could tell... This is my day <laughs> off. I ain't supposed to be here. It's I was one supposed those, to be with Leo. <laughs> it's one of those games... Or you're like, where where you, his face said, yo, we're about to lose 4-0, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just as right before the whistle even blew. And his face said, bro, I miss Brazil right now. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Inter Miami, uh, in, in, you know, without Messi, you could understand that they're not going to be as dominant. But Yeah, but look, click on it. Let's just talk about their back line, bro. I mean, who? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't do that. No. Don't do that. They've, they've had an okay game. Come on. The scores, bro. Dos Santos is a backup keeper. Yeah, yeah. He did not look great. He did not look good. He got a 5.0. <laughs> you go with a five-man back line, essentially. Mm -hmm. But three of them, I mean, Robert Taylor is not exactly a defender. But you got 5.3, 5.5, and 5.8. That's not good. This is not good. This is, and look, the, the, the And it wasn't that the score's low because they got cooked. It's because of the setup that they got cooked. <laughs> Because, look, slide over to the Red Bull side. Okay, okay. Right. Well, all the stats came from two players. <laughs> Scroll down a little bit. Van Zier, yeah. yeah, Dante Van Zier <laughs> and, and, and Lewis Morgan. Uh, yeah, who played uh, two up top, and it was basically like barely anybody was marking these guys. No, yeah, yeah. you have three on two, and they were like, we don't know who to go. No, the Rebels had like easily one of the best games they ever had. Also, I'm sure they did not forget about the the the, the game the last time they mm -hmm. played where Messi uh, came and, and they, they won uh, right last at the second. last few seconds yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, well, you know, we were kind of teasing John Tolkien where he was like, he just didn't even see that the pass was, was an option. He was watching the game. He's like, Yo, no, I got crazy. this. I was like, oh, okay, I didn't know it's that pass. It's crazy that that's messy. Hey, why is the ball going past? <laughs> I didn't know that pass was available. Yeah. Uh, so, no, this was a a big, you know, they answered back. Uh, and I'm sure that that was on their on their mind for sure. Um, but th these games, when, when there's an international break and, you know, who knows what the, these lineups are going to look like. This was a, I mean, they just, they were so dominant. They just like, they looked for Dante Van Dier, four assists, which I, I I think is the club record, which is already with, with the you know Tasha Kleshen played for the Red Bulls and mm -hmm. and and for 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 Dante Van Dier after the you know very controversial issues he had last year. Yes, yes. yes um, yes. so it, it it is kind of wild, but th I I think the 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 rain. Uh, uh, played a huge part. Obviously, you know, it's just the the not only the rain, but then the the players that that did step in 
just didn't. They just, look, no. and, and Tata Martino uh, was uh, pretty straightforward. He said that uh, we we didn't. I, I think I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said like we just didn't have any competitive spirit. We did not want to win this game, and uh, I, you you sort of notice it in certain moments, in, especially in defending. There was a moment, I forgot, it might have been like the third goal or something like that, where Julian Gressel is defending. And Julian Gressel's the homie, but it's also, it's pouring rain. It's mad cold, and you're already losing two or three goals. You're already two, three goals down, and the yeah, defending. I can't, I can't blame you for you know, taking the rest <laughs> of the game off. <laughs> there was just a moment where, like, it, it wasn't even like he got cooked. No. It was just like. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't really want to be here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're trying. <laughs> all right, well, go ahead and enjoy. It. Couldn't be me. But yeah, all right. yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I don't think there's one goal going to matter in the grand scheme of things. So, but I look. All right. So tell me which statement is more true from this match. Okay, which statement is more true? Inter Miami are this bad, or New York Rebels are this good? Which is a truer w- statement? Um. I would oh, say man. Red Bulls are this good because we've already, yeah, I would we've say, already I guess seen Red Bulls are this good because I don't think you it, think so. We've already seen Inter Miami play really well. Yeah, this, I mean, look at the you just look at the lineup. Obviously, Robert Taylor on on um, playing a, a, a wing back and Julian Gressel in the midfield, or like it, they 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 just wasn't a clear understanding of like the what the, the I think defensive responsibilities were because the there was a couple moments. Um, you know, it, also it, Luis Suarez looked like he was on an island out there, bro. Yeah, dude. he would get the ball. He'd have three defenders. He's like, bro, I got no knees. Okay, <laughs> well, Could I have you a feeling. Just help me. I was gonna say, I have a feeling that's what Luis Suarez is gonna look like. There's gonna be some games where he's feeling it and he's feeling physically up for it, and some yeah. games when his knees just can't handle it anymore. Yeah, this is just a, it's not a it's not an ideal lineup. It's also a bummer because like the the, the keeper looked awful. I, I I don't uh, what's his first name? Uh, uh Carlos dos Santos. He not only did he like, yeah, you're gonna give up a couple goals here and there, but he was late diving to so many yeah. balls that it was just like, yeah, I mean, uh, look, I'm not a goalkeeping expert, but I'm like, I don't think that's the position. He's supposed <laughs> to be. He just did not look great. And again, I, I'm gonna attribute it to the weather and it just not. Being- it seemed like everything lined up for Miami to have a bad game, but I will say, I think. I don't think the Rebels are this good. I mean, again, they didn't even have Emil Forsberg in there, which is crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, Rebels also missing uh, quite a yeah. few players. So, but I do think Inter Miami are this bad in the sense that Messi's not there, and they're not deep at all, and they are very top heavy. And when you take out one, two really good players, this is the team. This yeah. is where you're looking at. Their XG was point two six. Yeah, for a Not three point two six. Point two six. Yeah, they just they couldn't figure anything out. This game. and Rebels scored four with a one point two three. Yeah. <laughs> they, they That's crazy. They couldn't figure anything out. This game just a, a bad game. You're gonna you gotta you know you gotta take some L sometimes. If they would have had played no with no keeper and an extra defender, I think the score would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. I honestly right. mean that. But then it's, this is the thing. I, I see Drake Calendar celebrating with the Nations League medal. And it's like, bro, man, just. Just stay with your team, yeah. bro. They need you more than the U.S. needs you right now. <laughs> no, get your ass back to Miami. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm like, I'm happy. He yeah. got, gets an opportunity, goes into camp, trains, develops a relationship. Cool. Trust with the with But the when, when you see the backup, and yeah. man, I'm like, bro, Drake. Nah. Drake. It's like, bro, I know <laughs> Drake. you want yeah. <laughs> Drake. I know you wanted to have a weekend with your boys, but your house falling apart. Okay. <laughs> Get back, bro. You're not going to have a home to go back to, bro. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so so a wild game there. The um, uh, uh, We also have to talk about Sporting Kansas City. Who and- looked actually pretty good for, for all but eight minutes. And in them eight minutes, LA Galaxy <laughs> went from being 2-0 down to 3-2 up. Yeah, the, uh, uh, Sporting Kansas City lose at, at Children's Mercy Park. Bro, scroll down to the to the stats. It's crazy, dog. Look at this. They basically controlled everything except accurate passes. Yeah, this is uh, we're looking at 52% for LA Galaxy to 48. The first half for Sporting Kansas City was remarkable. Yeah, they were, it was be- 26 shots. 26 shots <laughs> in the game. Nine on target. Yo, LA Galaxy only had 12 shots total. Yeah, seven of them were on target, <laughs> and three of them went in in yeah. pretty rapid succession. <laughs> so it's, it's feeling a little bit like the the move for for uh, uh, John McCarthy for, uh, to go from LAFC to LA Galaxy. It seems to be uh, smart move working out so yeah. far. This is, uh, uh, he had to obviously make a, a bunch of saves, but the. Uh, the, the the first half, uh, I feel like most of the goals were like 
scrambly, messy sort of, uh, yeah. you know, just in the box, ball bouncing around. It lands, uh, uh, to, you know, to to uh, you know the the, the team uh, with with the offensive opportunity, and and they ended up going in. But the uh, I, I thought the the passes from Ricky Puj. To to Jovalich, we're just like Jovalich. Uh, the passes are great, and you know Ricky Pusch is gonna uh, is going to deliver. He's gonna. Get- I mean, you know, for the the beginning of last season, I wouldn't have said that. Right, no. right. <laughs> which which you didn't, and that's why <laughs> a lot of Barcelona fans are quite upset with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the but but Ricky Pusch, we know he has the quality, and he's gonna get the ball to his teammates, and it's it's on the other teammates. To, well, now he know. has uh you know a teammate and more than one in Jovalich and probably Pancel who are like. If you give me the ball, I'm gonna try to score. Exactly. But last season, it was like, why would you do this? Yeah. Why would you give me the ball? <laughs> but Jovlich, there's nine other guys out there. I loved <laughs> that that Jovlich took those. Uh, there was one uh, goal that was called back uh, uh, due to it being offside, but it was essentially the same play. And and Ricky Puj uh, uh, kind of threads the ball mm-hmm. uh, uh, between the the fullback and and the left center back. And Jovlich, this is where he is developed, and maybe it's building chemistry. Maybe it's just. Kind of ex- now he knows when to expect the ball, or maybe now the the coach knows when he should. Yeah, but the, where he should play and when the he touches play the ball. from Jovic were perfect. Where yeah. he he his first touch put the ball in a place where the center back had to like he had to turn around, and uh-huh. so he was already a step behind. And then uh, so it doesn't even look like Jovic is doing that much, but he no, is world class, world okay. class touching. Put, he just putting the ball just out of the distance of the defender that they can't, they can't, they can't die for the ball because otherwise they 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 won't be able to track back and mm-hmm. defend. And uh, and then they they also can't adjust themselves perfectly to put a body on Jovic uh, to prevent him from get from controlling the ball. And he did that uh, uh, two times, and it was just. Uh, it's just one of those things of like, okay, this is the the galaxy. Uh, should be a fun team to watch and should have some uh, a level of, of quality. And we haven't really seen it for the last few years. I remember we've been pretty harsh on them because you know they've somewhat lost you know control of being the dominant force in the city and uh-huh. so on and so forth. And you know, are they the standout club? You know, this was this was a time where they were the Real Madrid of this league, if you will. Yeah, yeah. You know, where they were the they were the one that everybody wanted to go play for, and they were the team that would win, and they were the team that felt like they would spend the most money and had the most cachet. And that's kind of gone away to some degree. But the way they've started out this season, you'd think, no, they're kind of back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's early. It's really early. So I hate to say any of these things until at least midway through the season. I think uh, But in particular, Ricky Pooch starting out this committed looking to the LA Galaxy is a Large contrast to from what we saw last year. I agree. I agree. Um, I, I also got to give props to uh, Maya Yoshida, the the center back mm-hmm. uh, that came over, uh, the Japanese center back. He came over from, I believe, Serie A or Bundesliga. It was either Serie A or Turkey. I can't remember. Uh, let me see. We'll look at his uh, player uh, profile. He came uh, from Schalke. He came from uh, from Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah. So, but but he played in uh, in Sampdoria. So he speaks a, a, a few languages. He speaks English. I believe he speaks German pretty well and Italian. And I, I saw uh, an interview with him. Uh, a post game interview a couple games ago where they were talking about the, the what the back what language the backline communicates in and he's like I speak to the right side in 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 Japanese or something yeah. like and then I speak to uh, uh, somebody else in Spanish or Italian or whatever and it's just like you, you look one way you speak in one yeah. language you look the other way you speak in another like, yo do me a favor oh yeah I'm in power. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, I love that I love that uh, so uh, so the, yeah the galaxy especially with uh, the introductions of of, of Pinto and uh, is it is it Gabriel Peck what's his first name yeah Gabriel Peck uh, just making a, a huge difference uh, already so they, they've been really fun to watch uh, so far um, the yeah but I feel bad for Kevin Cho, the homie uh, having to see Sporting Kansas City give up a two goal lead and then, hey, this year's already easier than last year end up losing. <laughs>